Previously on Destiny's Child, Secrets Exposed. We're looking at each other like, oh my gosh. Seven years down the drain. You can't say I'm missing shows if I'm no longer a part of the group anymore. That's a lie. <laughs> Bold face one. I was told by somebody in the group, you know, you don't even do enough in this group to even have an opinion. From there, you were basically just fired. Pretty much. As long as it was Beyonce and Kelly doing the singing, the belief of all of us is that it would make a major difference, and sure enough, it didn't. Two of the girls who left the group in a controversy claimed that there was favoritism, that Beyonce was favored. Given that she is rising now as a star, when you look back, were they in some ways right? Our issue was strictly with management, and it had nothing to do with Beyonce and Kelly. Destiny's Child continued to succeed and deliver big hits like Survivor, Bootylicious, and Independent Woman. The group became much stronger as a trio. Vocally, we're stronger than we've ever been because now everybody can sing really well. So everybody gets to sing lead now because everybody can sing lead. So of Destiny's Child suffered in silence. LaToya and Latavia attempted to form their own girl group called Angel. Jagged Edge tried to help them put music out. However, the production company that Angel was under collapsed. It was all a complete disaster. The group Angel ended before it even started. LaToya Luckett was devastated that her dreams of singing were over. Her self-confidence went down and it took her a while to get back up on her feet. My self-esteem was very, very low. Beyonce is very talented, and so I was like, well, I'm not sounding like that. That's my, not my thing, so maybe I can't sing. Okay. Latoya went on to do well in her solo career. She had a number one hit record on the charts called Torn, and she had two top five albums. Latoya became an unexpected success, but she still faced an obstacle from her past. Yes. Is there any truth to the rumors that Matthew Knowles tried to keep you off the BET Awards? I, I'm not sure of that. I, I, I hope not. I hope not. I was on there, though. So. Yeah, you did do your thing. Latoya is currently singing and acting, and she has been involved in several projects. Latavia, on the other hand, had a much harder time after Destiny's Child. Although she was financially stable, thanks to her shared writing credits on Destiny's Child's album, she still had personal unresolved issues. Latavia suffered from depression when she was kicked out of Destiny's Child. Also, Latavia carried a dark secret. She was molested as a child, and the trauma from that caused her to turn to drugs and alcohol. Um, I turned to substances to, to cope substances. with pain. Yes, yes. 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 Drugs, is, and, uh, drugs and alcohol. Yeah. I was dealing with the simple fact of being molested and all of that stuff, but and I turned, I abused alcohol to try to self-soothe. I got a DWI. I went to jail for Hatra. I thought I was going to die. It was one of the most horrible experiences of my life. Luckily, Latavia turned her life around, and with the help of God, she was able to overcome her struggles. Latavia is currently an author, businesswoman, and public speaker. Farrah also had a hard time adjusting outside of Destiny's Child. Farrah came from a dysfunctional background, and she had to fend for herself at the age of 15. After she left Destiny's Child, she attempted to pursue a career in music and modeling, but her life took some tough turns. Farrah was arrested several times for public intoxication and drug possession. Today, Farrah is still managing to stay afloat by singing and modeling. While Michelle Williams was riding high on the success of Destiny's Child, she did quietly suffer from depression. So for years, I'm in this one of the top selling female groups of all time suffering with depression. When she opened up about her issues to the group's manager, Matthew Knowles, he kind of brushed her off. Our manager at the time, bless his heart, he was like, y'all just signed a multi-million dollar deal, you're about to go on tour, what do you have to be depressed about? I think he wanted me to be grateful, which I was, but I was still sad. 
Fortunately, Michelle conquered her battle with depression and suicidal thoughts. Today, she is in a much happier place and she established a great career for herself in gospel music and in acting. Kelly Rowland is successful in her own right, but her life wasn't a complete fairy tale. When Kelly was eight years old, her parents separated, allegedly because of her abusive alcoholic father. Sadly, Kelly found herself in an abusive relationship around the time she was in Destiny's Child. She was allegedly abused by Kuda Love. In Kelly Rowland's song, Dirty Laundry, she revealed the sad details of her relationship. It was an emotional roller coaster. A piece of me would just go away every time he would say something. She said in her song, he pulled me out. He said, don't nobody love you but me. Not your mama, not your daddy, and especially not B. The relationship played heavily on Kelly's insecurities. Her former group member, Latavia, pointed out that Kelly was very timid growing up and she would cry whenever Matthew gave her harsh criticism. Kelly also had a stigma placed on her for constantly being in Beyonce's shadow. Even though Kelly had a breakout hit called Dilemma with Nelly and had numerous hits on the pop dance charts, it was clear that her manager, Matthew, invested more energy into Beyonce's career. Because of this, Kelly's music came at a standstill a few times. She said in her song, Dirty Laundry, while my sister was on stage killing it, I was enraged. Bittersweet, she was up, I was down. I feel good for her, but what do I do now? Meanwhile, this dude is putting his hands on me. Kelly also had struggles with her brown skin tone. Even though Kelly is loved for her flawless complexion, Due to some colorism in the music industry, she didn't always appreciate her shade. Um, I remember I went through a period where I didn't embrace my chocolatiness. And I remember um, Tina knows, B's mom, I remember um, being out in the sun and I was trying to shield myself from the sun and she said, are you crazy? <laughs> she said, you are absolutely gorgeous and just told me how beautiful I was. With brand new confidence, Kelly Rowland is living happily as a singer, mother, wife, author, model, and a spokesperson for several brands. Beyonce is the main superstar that emerged from Destiny's Child. Her accolades and accomplishments are numerous, and her performance skills are impeccable. She is one of, if not the greatest entertainer in her generation. Most would say Beyonce got an easy ride in Destiny's Child because she was always in the forefront and she was surrounded and coddled by her family. Former group member Farrah Franklin said that she envied the fact that Beyonce had the comfort of being around her family 24-7. You have the whole family on the road with you. It's kind of hard because you have a mother who is a hairstylist and also the clothing stylist. Right. You have a father who's the manager. Mm. You have our other, her other cousin, I'm sorry, I got, I'm saying my cousin now. You have her other cousin who was our attorney. You also have her other cousin who was our road manager. And you have her other cousin who was our road manager's assistant. And you have her sister, Solange, who was a background dancer. Right, right, right. Basically, everybody that works with us is a family member. And if they're not, they become family members. That's my sister. She's a star. She's a star, too. She's a star. However, life wasn't all peaches and cream for a massive pop star like Beyonce. Beyonce started singing at an early age, and she always had dreams of being an entertainer. She auditioned and joined a group called Girls Time, later known as Destiny's Child. Her father, Matthew Knowles, observed this, and he was intent on supporting his little girl. However, Matthew took his support for his daughter much further than the average parent would. He wanted hands-on involvement in managing the group. Destiny's Child slash Girls Time was originally molded and created by Andretta Tillman. She put in years of groundwork for the group and laid the foundation for their success. However, Matthew sought to have full control over the group because his daughter Beyonce was in it. The reasons for this was that he was very protective of his daughter, but he also saw that managing a group with already established music connections could be lucrative down the line. 
The former co-manager of Destiny's Child, Brian Moore, revealed in his book The Makings of Destiny's Child that the group basically was hijacked by Mr. Knowles. So uh, Matthew was not involved. The way he eventually became involved, in, in fact, Beyonce was not even the original lead singer. To Ashley Davis was. Uh, and then when we came back uh, with the attention turning toward Beyonce, uh, Matthew then started to wanting uh, to get involved, and we would kindly deny, it, you know, um, say no, no, you know, we're good, we're good, because the last thing we wanted was a parent to be on the management team. Right. But but as we progressed, and Beyonce became more of a focus and more of the lead singer after Ashley left the group, uh, he then started to uh, maneuver his way. On tried to get onto the management team. Ultimately, with threats of removing Beyonce, uh, he was able. You know, we had to agree to let him uh, be a part of the management team, which started, you know, as a, a minimal capacity. Uh, then to ultimately where you know we moved the recording, I mean rehearsals and everything from Andretta's house to his house, and just let him and Lonnie, uh, who's the producer, and um, David Brewer, who's the vocal coach, you know, work with them over there. Uh, at her at his house so it, it appeared if all appearance it would appear that he was more of a part of management because the rehearsals was at his house but all the business was still happening at Andretta's and she and I was handling that as far as uh, talking to the record labels getting the record deals and things of that nature and the events putting on everything make sure everything stayed afloat so all the way up to Andretta died in 1997 after we had signed the Sony. She worked the, so the Electra deal. She got us the Sony Columbia deal uh, that they're presently on. And after her death uh, and some uh, things happening uh, that I found I could no longer be a part of it, I walked away and Matthew then took over the group. So his him being in charge or running a group was after the record deal was done after the first album was complete and you know the train was going downhill this award thank you all we dedicate this award to miss andretta tillman thank you while destiny's child was still developing matthew made serious sacrifices he left his corporate job for unknown reasons to invest in beyonce's career this decision put his family in a financial hole Beyonce's mother, Tina Knowles, almost went broke because the money was taken from her account to support Beyonce and Destiny's Child. The family went from living in a nice luxury home to a smaller quaint home. It was really hard trying to pay the bills and um, I get a little emotional. <laughs> so it was a little bit traumatic when we had to get, sell the house. This drastic transition forced Beyonce to work harder in her group. Even though she was a young teenager, there was a lot of pressure riding on her to make sure Matthew's investments weren't wasted. Tina silently endured a lot and there was a heavy strain on her marriage. This is all 100% alleged, but the co-manager Brian Moore revealed that Matthew allegedly had a serious drug problem. It's a possibility that the family's finances were eating up to support his expensive habit. According to Brian Moore, Matthew was known to go in Tillman's garage to do cocaine or other drugs during rehearsals for Beyonce's group. He claimed he would come back ranting and raving, yelling and carrying on, and would attend important meetings about her future career high as a kite. Even those around Knowles began to notice his frequent drug-induced rages. He only increased his drug use, Brian Moore wrote. It was getting out of control. He started lying even more to Tina and giving her the impression that there were meetings going on. Matthew used them as a cover for extramarital affairs with different women. Once again, this was all alleged. Tina dealt with severe heartache and allegedly fought often with her husband behind the scenes. All this was happening during the early days of Destiny's Child. While Beyonce was upstairs rehearsing in her room, Brian Moore was disgusted with some of the things he saw Matthew do, and Brian eventually walked away from the group's management. He goes into detail about it in his book, The Makings of Destiny's Child. Despite Matthew's negative antics, 
He did a great job in making Destiny's Child a success after their first album. He also helped make Beyonce the star she is today. Both he and Tina were excellent parents who made sure their children stayed grounded. Beyonce's strict upbringing kept her from acting wild and developing a huge ego like other teenage stars. And my mother took me to a record store and she was talking to me and, and I started singing while she was talking. And she was like, you better listen to me when I'm talking to you, don't sing, that's disrespectful. And she was telling me something and I started singing again. My mother slapped the mess out of me in front of everyone in the store. And it was like young guys and people that knew who I was and <laughs> they were playing the record because they saw me come in. She smacked the fire out of me and said, do not forget who you are. If she wouldn't have done that, who knows what would have happened to Absolutely. me. Beyonce's talent and diligence took her to superstardom, but at one point her rising superstardom was threatened. Beyonce faced extreme criticism and was blamed for all the problems in Destiny's Child. Even though the management team was the culprit, the blame was unfairly placed on Beyonce. When Latavia and Latoya were kicked out of Destiny's Child, the media blamed Beyonce. When Vera left the group, the media blamed Beyonce. Beyonce was targeted because she was the lead singer, which was typical. However, Beyonce was very sensitive to the negative press. On the Destiny's Child websites, the hate mail completely and totally targeting Beyonce specifically. We wouldn't even tell her some of the things we read. She would just get so depressed when people would make judgments on her. She was so distraught. She was like totally in tears. I couldn't even understand what she was saying. Someone can dislike me for whatever reason, just make up things, and, and there's no way of controlling that. And I had to deal with that from that age, which is really, really, really hard, especially for someone who's as sensitive as I am because I'm a people pleaser. I want everybody happy. Beyonce, being only 19 years old, got the reputation of being a diva and it tainted her image. Hate sites were made against her and hate mail was sent to her. She became very self-conscious about how other people viewed her. It didn't help that Beyonce was being shown favoritism. At least so people thought. Two of the girls who left the group in a controversy claimed that there was favoritism, that Beyonce was favorite. Given that she is rising now as a star, when you look back, were they in some ways right? I get no special treatment. As a matter of fact, I get the worst treatment because when I'm at home on my days off, my father is harassing me to do interviews and work. It was undeniable that Destiny's Child was a vehicle used to help Beyonce's solo career. Beyonce's father did go out of his way to snag solo deals for Beyonce, and she wasn't always happy about it. And I started going to the studio on my off time, and just me alone and writing the songs. And my dad was secretly um, playing the songs for record labels, and um, I was really mad because, you know, they were just for me. And because of that, I got Independent Woman placed on, on um, the soundtrack and um, ended up winning Songwriter uh, of the Year. Allegedly, Matthew would sometimes make extreme requests on Beyonce's behalf, which made her seem like a diva. Well, Beyonce, Janet, and Mary. Apparently, the behind-the-scenes controversy subsided. Beyonce reportedly only agreed to the shoot if she could stand in the middle for the cover. But the editors had already promised the position to Janet Jackson. Before my father was a manager, I was the lead singer. And it is hard because I get used as the punching bag for everything that happened. And it's because my father's the manager. I wish no one knew he was my father. <laughs> Despite his shortcomings, Matthew was a good father and he wanted the absolute best for Beyonce. Even though Beyonce clashed with him, she still loved and respected him very much. However, Beyonce fired Matthew as her manager, being the last member of Destiny's Child to do so. Beyonce fired him allegedly due to some failed negotiations. It was also alleged that he was stealing money from Beyonce. Additionally, Beyonce was fed up that he was cheating on her mother with close associates. Unfortunately, just like her mother, Beyonce dated men who both cheated on her, including her teenage sweetheart Lindell and her own husband Jay-Z. Beyonce rose above the personal drama and put her heart and soul into her work. She was a perfectionist 
and she constantly challenged herself to be better. Her incredible work ethic brought her to where she is today. Fortunately, Destiny's Child does not have a dismal ending. Even after Beyonce became a solo star, she went back and recorded another album with Destiny's Child called Destiny Fulfilled. This album was actually not required in Columbia's contract. However, Beyonce did it anyway because she loved her group. All of the former members and current members of Destiny's Child get along today. LaToya became friends with Michelle and rekindled her friendship with Beyonce and Kelly. We just loved on each other. We go shopping, we go to Krispy Kreme, we go to Houston. <laughs> There's no bickering. There's nothing mean or evil to say about anybody. This is, this is fine. I'd also like to thank the original members of Destiny's Child, LaToya Luckett and Latavia Robinson. Latavia told a touching story about how she and Beyonce reunited. It showed that they grew up from all the drama that they went through as teenage girls and they embraced each other again as women. I actually saw Beyonce here in Atlanta in Little Five Points. Um, I was out shopping with my friends and um, I, I ran into her. She was like way across the street and my friend Jason was like, Tavia, that's Beyonce and I think that she can see you from way over there. She came all the way across the street and we embraced and we hugged and you know, I told her how much I loved her and how much I was proud of her and that I missed her. And you know, it was the same words in exchange. But I wouldn't say that we were trying to avoid each other, but it might have been too emotional <laughs> to run back into each other again. But I'm glad that at least I got to hug her once everything was over and just let her know, you know, you know, I love you. That is the story of Destiny's Child. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please comment down below and please, please like, share, and subscribe. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.